you know, must, it was a two or three week period, maybe a, a four week period where I was engaged with three large LPs uh, in Canada, having the same conversation with all three of them, pretty much one after another. And I had, I had our guys come into us talking about them hearing or reading online or wherever the source came from that cannabis stored with Bovida, uh, Bovida uh, was sucking the terpenes out of the cannabis. Now, working close with you guys, knowing the answer, I reverted back to Scott. Uh, we we kind of talked and uh, put some materials together as a presentation with an explanation that we can talk about further here. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. So based on what we've learned to date so far, but also based on the next part of this conversation where I'm going here, in terms of some of the other studies and research you guys have done around is that true? Why, why were these guys coming to me asking me these questions? And, and we could talk about the explanation that was provided uh, as a topic as well. But there seems to be there seemed to be something out there where people were asking us questions about stuff that just straight up wasn't true based on facts, science, evidence, everything Drew mentioned. And that got Scott and I talking and that actually ended up us booking today to, to, to get together and talk about this. So let's play it out because I'm Instead of just uh, uh, defending the point, which uh, you've proven to yourself, but our listeners probably haven't had the opportunity, let's just play it out from the perspective of why would somebody even entertain the idea that we're possibly s stealing terpenes? Um, part of it is traditionally people would open a bag of cannabis and they'd take a nose hit off the bag. And they get a big bouquet off the bag and they go, hey, that's some pretty dank bud and this is pretty good news and that's awesome. Well, when you properly humidify with Bovida in that bag, what happens is, to Brian's point about the monolayer, instead of those terpenes coming out into the headspace, those terpenes are sequestered in the bud. Uh, and what happens is when you take a nose hit off that bag, you don't get as high of a, of a uh, bouquet as you would have if that had all been just unprotected. And so one point that I would make is when you smell a bag or a jar of cannabis and it's super fragrant, that's really good news to a degree because that's indicative of what was in that flower because you're smelling history. Mm. The, the important part is how many of those terpenes and cannabinoids are still in the flower and what was the opportunity taken to, to secure those, those terpenes and those cannabinoids in the flower in the first place. So it's understandable that people would go, hey, this is weird. I don't, I don't get quite the bouquet that I get off the bag that I used to without using anything. And to, to take it another step further, there's a lot of people that have taken shots at getting into this humidity control industry. And they've got some talented people that are that ha are very compelling personalities, and they talk a good game, and they say things that aren't necessarily grounded in fact, and they present things about either, you know, how many times have we heard, well, salt is bad. So they, they had this meme where they were talking about salt is bad, salt is corrosive. And objectively, you know, I suppose if we were dealing with salt on the hood of my automobile, uh, yeah, salt could be corrosive. But the salt in Bovida's product doesn't come out of the pack. Uh, the only thing that comes out of the pack is natural water vapor, and purified water vapor, and it's um, it's one of those arguments that, you know, clever salespeople make up in order to get a foot in the door and to get a foothold in the marketplace. And we always try to take the high road because we owe a great debt of gratitude to anybody that's tried to get into the marketplace because they have amplified the education about the need for precise, reliable, two-way humidity control in the cannabis industry. So... When I see these competitors out in the marketplace, even though their product doesn't perform anything like our product, I actually have a bit of gratitude for them because they have helped us uh, develop a marketplace uh, that we probably couldn't have done on our own as effectively as we've been able to do even with some of the disinformation that's out in the marketplace. But um, we're wide open for all those questions, whether it's about what the Bovida pack gives off, what it takes in, what the, you know, any questions about safety, these are things we take very serious, seriously, and we'll, we'll do a great job if you give us a chance of showing you specifically what the studies say about what our product does and doesn't do, and uh, we're confident that you're going to be happy uh, using the only product in the marketplace that actually performs the way ours does. And I love your way you described uh, 
about the smell and the odor and the bouquet because one of my favorite lines kind of after I've helped explain about uh, the process, what Bovida does, why it's beneficial, all the things we've, we've started to cover here, you know, the, the closing line is essentially if you can smell your cannabis, it's degrading. Uh, and that's not good. So you have to almost, it's a complete paradigm shift in people's minds yeah. to associate odor or lack of odor with quality of cannabis. Just, just mm -hmm. science proves it. And it's just the paradigm shift in someone's mind. And that's, that's, that's the industry we're in and the, why we get up every morning and, uh, and talk really highly about what you guys do. So that's exactly it. We're, you know, <clears throat> we're changing the mindset of, uh, an industry, you know, that's, that's traditionally for the last 40, however many years judge the quality of cannabis based off of smell in the bag mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in reality, and, and I didn't even like, you know, this is all new for me. We're learning this as we go on our own. Like that's the part of what, what I love about Bovida is, you know, we're so interested in, in learning more and educating ourselves and, and researching. And, and that's what we're finding. And now, uh, Drew and I on the sales side have the job of, you know, telling that story and, and, trying to change an industry in a in a safer higher quality way of of really judging the quality of cannabis yeah i i sure, gotta sure. add on to that i i remember when that first came in um and you know bovida stoles are steel and terpenes um and as a scientist you're saying well how does water vapor do that and you know obviously if you've got some really sticky high terpene profile buds in any container, your container is going to smell like weed yeah. many, many months afterwards after it's gone. Um, so we went through the whole gambit of, you know what, I'm going to take our packs, I'm going to test the paper, nothing's in the paper, I'm going to test the inside of the formula, nothing was inside the formula. And as we started to dig down and it was zero, zero terps here, zero terps within the formula, okay, what what really is happening? And then it pushed us into those studies to, to really understand that, that range and that model layer. So I'm actually happy, you know, yeah. I love talking to consumers and scientists, you know, you have a direct relationship to them and um, start to understand and solve problems. And uh, it's great. Uh, it was, it was really interesting. And, and just that range alone helps. So. Yeah. One of the, one of the uh, comments that we make that resonates really well is further to Drew's, uh, uh, explanation about try it out, uh, try storing uh, your product with can uh, with Bovida and without or with uh, no humidity controls or alternative humidity controls. Uh, 30 days, 60 days, whatever you want, take it out, give it a whiff. Uh, take the product stored with, with Bovida and grind it up in your hand or put it in a grinder and it's going to blow your face off in terms of that bouquet, right? So you, you got to change how they're going to get their receptors to appreciate the quality uh, at the appropriate time, not the fact when you open the bag, it smells good. So it's really, really, uh, really good examples of helping to explain to people what, what's happening here and all the benefits. I was just on a call this morning with an LP and there was an ex executive from the LP. And then, um, I don't recall if it was the head grower, but one of, uh, the members of their grow team that was very, uh, informed on cannabis and this was brought up by the executive and I didn't even have to say anything. I don't know if this guy took the challenge. Could I need to follow up with him or, or what? But he said, no, you don't understand. If you're smelling a lot of terpenes when you open one of our containers, that means that it's not been stored properly and those are in the headspace. He said, if you use Bovida, you're not going to smell the most, like it's not going to be an intense nose hit when you open that bag. But as soon as you break that up and grind it up, it's there and it's been protected in the cannabis and now you can actually consume it and enjoy it versus just smelling it in the air yeah it's kind of i give people the uh analogy of you know you buy an orange or if you have an orange it may smell very uh it'll smell like an orange just a hint of it but as soon as you peel that open those terpenes and those oils get released and then it's like whoa your hands will smell like an orange your mouth mm -hmm. your face whatever you touch afterwards will smell like an orange that's a great example yeah one other thing I wanted to touch on and, and, and around this testing, and we talk about the amount of terpenes that we can, we can save, is uh, we started to understand uh, there's a, another facet to this, and it was, um, you know, what happens to cannabis over time uh, when it's stored with bovida and without bovida. Um, so more of a stability test. And what was really interesting, we started to look at what would happen in seven days 
what would happen in 30 days, 60, and 90. Uh, and this, these are long-term tests that, um, you know, we're using outside labs, and no one else in the industry is doing these tests. And we've, we've been finding that in, in almost um, in the seven days without humidity control, almost 40% of the terpenes are lost. Uh, wow. within your cannabis, wow. uh, which is what was astounding to us. Um, and then at the four-month mark, you lose almost up to 60%. So, um, and with Bovida, it's just the opposite. Uh, we're maintaining it and, and controlling it all the way through. So uh, there's just more and more studies that we're doing. They're just finding out and just unique plant and, and terpenes and what happens and how they're actually changing. We see terpenes changing over time. Uh, and starting to co-mingle and create uh, their different flavors. So uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and mm. you know what? To The seven days blew my mind, too. It's almost, like, unreal how how much are lost at, at seven days. And, and I think, you know, I've heard a lot that people say, oh, I sell my cannabis too fast to need Bovida. Well, seven days is a pretty short window and you're losing 40 percent of those terpenes i mean that's all the more reason to to make sure that your cannabis is properly what, what is it? 